Hello, 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 everyone. Dr. Rowena Winkler here, and welcome to another astrology conversation with me. Here we are in Gemini season, and I am so excited to chat with one of my oldest friends, a Gemini queen who's celebrating birthday today. Is that right, Janine? Actually, Sunday. Oh, Sunday. Yeah. Why did I think your birthday was today? Okay. This well, Sunday. my parties, you know. <laughs> day so Sunday. We have your birthday coming up on Sunday. I'm so excited to chat with Janine Mahoney. We've known each other since high school, which it's hard to believe. Thinking this out, like, whoa, like really a full 23 years. <laughs> Yeah, that's a long time, 20 plus years. We don't look it though. We're so fresh. I know. Somebody <laughs> told me this yesterday when I was like, yeah, I'm going to be 37. They were like, what? You look like I you're know. 23. And you I was like, like we're 12. okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so this is really, I'm really excited to chat with you about Gemini season, about communication, creativity, because you are definitely one of the most artistic, creative people that I know, just seeing your journey as an artist and you know, well, I'm sure we'll talk about our, our times doing musicals at yeah. Camden Catholic High School <laughs> in New Jersey, which was one of the beautiful experiences that brought us closer together. But oh, man, I've watched the Tonys and I was like, oh, uh, theater. listen, I know, I know. Before we get into that, just one quick logistical thing, y'all. Um, you know, we do these astrology conversations every every month for each each zodiac sign. And FYI, if you are into the astrology and want to want to learn more, want to know more, want to get personalized readings with me and really dive in deep, uh, I just relaunched the newest iteration of my inner muse membership. Uh, if you go to rowenawinkler.com slash inner dash muse dash membership, if you use the discount code I'm in, I M M in, you'll get 33% off your first payment, whether that is a monthly payment or a yearly payment. So just had to get that, you know, little sales out of the way before we <laughs> dive into this conversation. So with that, okay. First of all, Gemini, I, I'm curious, do you know your big three? I did pull it up because I've read your chart before, but I didn't know if you knew your your sun, moon, and rising. <laughs> oh, no, I don't. That is fine. That is fine. Yes, we'll get into that. Lightly. <laughs> I would love to know, just knowing yourself as a Gemini, and I'm sure you've dabbled, right, and looked up things about yeah. Uh, Gemini. What, what resonates with you in terms of Gemini and Gemini characteristics? So... Definitely people always say, oh, Gemini, you're like two different personalities or whatever. And like, that sounds like really weird, but it's super true. <laughs> um, and and like, and then I've heard, I feel like I've heard people who are like more into the astrology who are like, well, that's not really what it means. And I was like, but it's true. Like, I am like, I used to say I was really shy and people would be like, you're totally not shy. And like, I like, because I feel, and there are times where I won't like, be outgoing or whatever. I just, I just like, nope, nope, not doing that this time. Right. And then there are other times where I'm just like, totally like, this is the best. I love seeing people and, <laughs> and stuff like that. And then um, like the, similarly, like when I was in grad school, um, my, my professor brought up something about like, oh, well, are you, um, are you an introvert or an extrovert? And I was like, well, I'm really like outgoing. And he was like, no, I mean, like, do you get energy from other people or do you get energy by being alone? And they're like, both, like a hundred percent, like, like I'm having my birthday party yeah. um, tomorrow. I'm going to have a bunch of people. We're going out like, okay. right. I'm so I need that, that in my life. I miss that so much the last okay. three years. Okay. Um, I need to be with people. And like, when I do do that, like I get so much from it. But like, if I do it too much, I have to be like, nope, nope, me time now. Me yeah, time. Yeah. I like need like a day all to myself. That makes a lot of sense. You know, so Gemini's right is a very social sign. So the fact that you love to surround yourself with people, I'm excited to drive up to New Jersey tomorrow and to celebrate your birthday with you. We'll have to put stuff on like Instagram stories or whatever. I know, I know. Karaoke. Um, I'm very, very excited for that. So yeah, that makes total sense. And what's interesting is that, so let me get to your big three. Your, your sun sign is that Gemini. You also have a Gemini rising. So you have that double Gemini mm. and the rising sign is that ascendant. It's how people perceive you, which I feel mm. definitely tracks, right? You're 
you're very articulate. You're very, you know, you, you, you very talkative and really yeah. easy to carry. And you know that more than most people. <laughs> I do know you. I knew yeah. that because I've experienced our chats for 20 plus years. Yeah. <laughs> but like that loquaciousness and the ability to articulate and to communicate is very much Gemini. And that's mm -hmm. definitely the vibe that you give when people first, first interact with you. But it's interesting when that you mentioned that if it's too much, you need to go inward because your moon sign, which is that stability, that security, what makes you feel safe and secure, you know, folks like your husband or your close family members or friends aren't going to see this side of you as much because it's the more vulnerable, intimate side. It's mm -hmm. a Scorpio. So you're a water sign for that. And Scorpio Whoa. is very deep, very introspective. Uh, yeah. which I feel then ties into the fact that you're so creative and artistic. Um, you know, Janine, Janine's a beautiful artist. She's Thank done you. really great That's work. That's another thing is um, that whole like right brain, left brain thing. Yeah. And like, I am so artistic and I have all these like, you know, creative ideas, but I also have a very like logistical side and like, mm -hmm. I'm a project manager at work and I figure out how to get things done when they need yeah. to get done. Um, so I do have the two sides there as well. Yeah. Yeah. My art like super handy that I could like slash on the screen. Well, maybe, you know what? Maybe, maybe, yeah. Maybe we can like, oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> maybe we can, maybe in the show notes or something, if you have a portfolio yeah. or something that we can share links, we'll de we definitely will. Or okay. Yeah. Listen on idea or what have you, but that totally tracks because Gemini is an air sign and Gemini is you know very can be very logical rational you know no. you know that that t certainly ties in with the professional work that you do and you mentioned you have this very you know logical brain but then you you also have you do have quite a bit of water in your chart when i look looked at your chart in preparation for this so that water is that emotionality that creativity yeah. that connection that depth that certainly translate and comes through in the work that you do so i love that it's awesome that you're able to to integrate that in, you know, not just your creativity, but also in your professional work. Yeah, yeah, it's true. I definitely yeah. get the both the both sides in everywhere. <laughs> Would you like to chat about about what you do professionally and how maybe how your skills as a communication, you know, driven zodiac sign sure. or or how that yeah, how perhaps that creativity comes through in the work that you do? Sure. So I'm assistant director of marketing services for the um, marketing communications team at Drexel University's Office of Institutional Advancement. <laughs> yeah. a long time. I know. I know. Um, so basically, um, the marketing communications team uh, is like specifically for our fundraising team, and mm -hmm. we put out emails, um, solicitations, letters. Um, we do all kinds of communication and marketing for events that are going on that are either engaging alumni or trying to, um, you know, engage donors and, and um, other people who could be potential funders at some point. Um, so I mostly use the logistical side because as the um, assistant director of marketing services, like basically I do project management and I also um, kind of, I take the processes that we use like in order to like get a project done. So like the project management stuff, but we use a specific tool like online work zone. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I like refine those processes. So all of our stuff happens more um, like efficiently and fluidly and stuff like that. Oh. So I'm constantly trying to find like quicker, easier, more better ways to do yeah. things. Um, so there's like definitely logistics, but I also get to like, um, be involved with our visual team and I don't get to do all, any of the actual designing, although I throw my two cents at my two cents in every once in a while. Cause I, I'll be on like, um, like reviews of visuals and I'll be like, Oh, well, what if you like change that color a little, you know, <laughs> what if you yeah. made a circle, you know, yeah. I don't do it a whole lot. Cause our visual team is like really great. Um, but every once in a while I'm like, Oh, like, what if you tried this out or what if you tried that? Like, cause I have that. Um, also I feel like the, the creative side definitely helps with project management. Cause sometimes like 
you have to figure out how to do things in a, in a new way, right? Yeah. Or maybe we have a project that we've never really done something like that before where we're trying to um, send out a mailing or something. And they're like, well, what if we use this, uh, you know, kind of mail thing or, oh, yeah. um, and I have to throw those ideas around to kind of like help in terms of like fitting it into a schedule and budget and that kind of thing. Yeah, so yeah. I still have to think about all the different options, even though, you know, it's not like my project, I have to come yeah. up with some creative answers. So, well, that's fascinating because this actually came up recently. I'm, I'm teaching the strategic communication capstone course for Butler university right now. Mm -hmm. And we had a conversation about creativity and how there are, you know, there's sometimes misunderstanding about what it means to be creative, right? Mm -hmm. Folks are thinking all the time, I'm not creative, I'm not creative. But you gave a beautiful example, right, right then and there of how as a PM, there is creativity involved, because you do have to think outside the box, and yeah. sometimes an experiment and, and maybe, you know, maybe fail or what have you. Yeah, like, you know, not everything is like a perfect puzzle piece, like you just kind of got to move things around and shift them to fit them That's in the right, right. place. Yeah, That's totally right. That's totally right. Do you feel that you're able, you know, I think it's really cool that even though you're not on the design team, you do, that. You know, it seems that your comments are welcomed and whatnot. Yeah. You know, do you feel empowered in whether, and we can switch to like personal context as well, or in your, in your creative endeavors, you know, how do you channel, because Gemini is all about the communication and, and using that voice, right? Like that throat yeah. voice, like, how do you feel empowered like when do you feel you're at your you're in your you're at your best when you're using your voice like when do you feel most like you <laughs> like a big loaded That's really deep really <laughs> i know i'm tapping into that scorpio moon so um um let's see when do I, I don't uh well i gotta say like um like uh, professionally i feel like really empowered when so this is kind of like selfish, but um, when it's mostly my team who's discussing things because we have we have a really tight group, yeah, um, right. and I feel like we we've all worked together for a long time, and even the people who are like kind of new, they've been here for a couple years, um, and just like we all have each other's backs and we really know it. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I always feel like empowered to speak up and like really express like. And, and a lot of, we, we just finished up our um, alumni weekend. Uh, so that's a huge undertaking. Yeah, it's one, sure it's, it is. It's literally our biggest, um, biggest project in the year. Um, and so we had like a debrief and we had, we had a debrief, just our team. And then we had a debrief with the alumni relations team mm -hmm. and like our debrief. And like, we brought up the same concerns at the alumni re relations debrief, but like our debrief, like we, it's kind of like, you know, you can't like offend anybody, right? Because we really were like, we're just, we're kind of like a family, you know? So like, um, we all were talking like, well, what if we do this next year? And what if we do that next yeah. year? And like, we're able to bounce those ideas off each other and come up with like new thoughts. And, and I feel like that's kind of like where I, where I get creative because we talk a lot about, a um, about like, how can we better communicate this to our audience? Right. And like, sure. it's just, throw out ideas and like it's not like what you said like a traditional like I'm not an artist but I'm still being creative right like we're still coming up with um new ideas I actually took um like another course at work like did I really need a course on creativity well you know I would I could take it so oh, yeah. was, like a certificate in like creativity and innovation so I just like Ooh, took the courses as like my professional development and it basically was like you you can be creative in so many different ways and like oh, yeah. just like one like you know art being artsy is creative but like being able to like come up with new and different solutions is creative like it doesn't have to be music or art um mm -hmm. it can just be like new new things new thoughts and ideas and I think in a business setting, we definitely need more of that, right? Because mm -hmm. I know I've come across that in my professional experiences where I'm just, you know, banging my head against the, mm -hmm. <laughs> the proverbial wall because it's, we're uh, doing the same old, same old. It's no longer efficient. It's out, yeah. right? And so we need folks like, like you who are able to, to think again, like think of new, more efficient, streamlined ways to, to do things because then it allows you the space to, to try new things out and, and to, you know, not keep 
doing the same old, same old. Especially yeah, definitely. Crazy. I'm a big, and not to like get on my own little tangent, but I've been like really interested recently in, in uh, steam over STEM um, because oh, yes. I, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I mean, I knew you would be. Um, like, <laughs> I'm super. Like, my mom was, uh, you know, a biology major, and she did clinical research right out of college before she had kids. My dad's an optometrist. My brother has a PhD in biology. Right? Like, we have a lot of scientists in the family, but we're all very creative as well. Like, my yeah. dad plays guitar. My other brother plays guitar. Jack was in the in the shows that came to Catholic. Yeah. My mom sewed. She makes jewelry, and I did theater and and I'm a visual artist. Oh, and a musician and carries a music. My husband's a musician too. We we make Christmas music um with um his his like friends in the music community. Um South Jersey music community. Arbor Christmas, look it up. Uh, <laughs> well we can really get the show <laughs> um, Arbor Christmas, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So and and where was I going with that? Um Oh yeah. So like, I, I obviously have like a, like a, uh, I value science a lot. Yeah. Um, I was so, when I was in like eighth grade and you had to put it in the yearbook, like, what do you want to be when you grow up? I was going to be a scientist and artist. Um, like I really value the scientific right. method and like, um, you know, inquiry and, and like learning new things and, and doing them in like a, really rigorous way. Sure. Um, but I also like, I'm not a, super fan of STEM because of my arts background and because I don't STEM like as a, as like a whole, like, right. Like you can't have it unless you progress. Like that's the whole point of it is to move forward. And I don't see how you can move forward without being creative and coming up with innovative oh. and ideas. Oh, and I love it. If so we're cool. going to teach, thank you. If we're going to teach kids how to um, do science, technology, engineering, and math, we need to teach them how to think outside the box and broadly and, 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 exercise that creative muscle especially like i know so many people who are like um oh i'm like you said i'm not creative i'm not an artist yeah. or i haven't colored since i was in second grade well like that's a problem man <laughs> <laughs> it's a problem, man. If we can't exercise our creativity, then then we're never gonna like move forward and be progressive, exactly. right? That is so true. Well, yeah, okay. you know it. no, no, you're fine. You're a little baby in there. Hold on. Oh, you're totally fine. I was okay. actually gonna bring up the fact that that you're a mama, um, I you know, and that. And she's getting ready to go into kindergarten, and I hope her school values steam. Yeah. No. That, <laughs> Well, thank you so much for that whole steam, like pro it's been like a little like pee of mine recently. Yeah, steam uh, soapbox. I am so here for it, and yes. it makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. uh, so yes, yes, and you know we heard your little one in the background. I was actually going to bring that up, so it was good timing that we, we <laughs> of, you know because we're talking about you know this. So, okay, so I've, I've, there's two parts of this question, I guess. I I don't know why, probably because we know her so well. I want to ask you 5,000 questions in one yeah, day. Right. So the first is, again, you know, honoring the science. I know that you're very uh, vocal about, about the infertility that you experience. I know that's something that we've talked about, and I'm also very open about, about yeah. you know, what Derek and I have gone through to to have our daughter and now you know we have this little baby boy about oh, to pop i'm 33 I'm weeks so today and uh, at the time oh, I was no, it's getting close it's getting close yeah you'll see me tomorrow i'm humongous um, <laughs> <laughs> but you know just it's interesting right trusting the science right mm -hmm. the science and then also you know just the surrender of the and with like the human experience right that there's this there's this beautiful integration of of you know we need the science we need this medical but there's also aspects of it too from like a spiritual and emotional you know mental perspective yeah. so that we're open and you know that's my vibe right like so that we're open to receive and be able to 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 have these these kids like thank god for the science but i think for yeah. me too it was such a humbling moment to be like oh damn rowena for the first time in your life 
I couldn't just. You don't have control. I don't have control. <laughs> yeah, so we are. We are two people who are always in control of things. <laughs> uh, like high school, man. I was like, oh, okay, study. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, that was the other thing too, right? Going back to the whole like, ac- we, you know, we were in honors classes together, very academic, but also doing shows and and also yeah, dance music. team. Yeah, we got our good grades or what have you, but when it came to trying to conceive, man, like I couldn't pass the test. <laughs> right. Oh my gosh. You just, that is like the perfect way to put it. It's just yeah. like, uh, isn't this supposed to work? Like we're right. made to work this way. Right. <laughs> but I think it goes back again to what you're talking about in terms of the education system and just education in general. Like, no, we don't, we're not taught this, right. We're not really you know what I mean? I spent yeah. the majority of my 20s trying not to get pregnant. Not to get pregnant, yeah. The whole time I had decreased ovarian reserve and couldn't get pregnant <laughs> anyway. Yeah, right. You're just you know? like, uh. or like then, like with me, they they did not. We I I never got a clear diagnosis. It was like unexplained, basically. Mm, um, gosh, but so it's clearly fun. something that um am, is hereditary. My mom went through it. My grandmom went through it with my mom. Um, I pray Rena doesn't go through it, but we'll see. And I'll be here for her because I know exactly what it's like. Um, and that was helpful when my mom knew like a lot of what it's like. She didn't go through all the same things that I did, but she went through infertility as well. And and so she was like definitely someone like a sounding board um, and a good support. Um, and she helped me. Uh, she gave me my shots when I had, Aww. I didn't, I didn't do IVF, so I didn't have daily shots or twice daily. I think sometimes people have, um, it's a lot of but shots. I had one sure. and my mom did it. And that's the time I got pregnant. So, Aww, that's so <laughs> Rena is uh, like part hers. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I'd love to hear how, especially since both you and your husband are so creative and, you know, artistic and whatnot. How do you cultivate that with your daughter? Mm-hmm. It's a good question because, like, uh, like we obviously do cultivate creativity, but there are times when I find that it's um, there's like this line that you need to walk where it's like teach mm. rules and standards, and also teach like freedom and expression, right? Like, it's really tough, like trying to say like you have to go to school and this is what you're gonna have to do in school. Like, this is how cute Rina is. Um, she. <laughs> She knows her ABCs. Oh, so tell, them, tell folks out there, how old is Rena? How old is oh, she's four and three quarters? Four yeah. and three quarters. Okay. She so will, she will turn five like the day she starts kindergarten. So that's okay. interesting, but it'll be great. Um, and so she um she writes like the ABCs, but then we'll put like a mermaid tail on the M and like a, like the S is a snake. So it's got a little like tongue and like, like all these things. And we're like, that is so adorable. I'm so glad you made that for me. Your teacher probably wants to see just regular M's (laughs) like, right. Like, and they're like, I want her to keep doing it. I told her recently, like when you start kindergarten, like, until your teacher knows you, make sure you do like what your teacher's asking and do it like uh-huh. like standard and then say, can I like add tails to this, I, right? I, I don't want terrible. her to stop doing it. And like, I want, and then there's another thing. She loves singing, which is great. I, I knew this when I was pregnant that she was gonna be musical because we went to a concert at the man in Philly. Um, it was like Memorial Day, like, America songs like right <laughs> like, there's the one that's like bah, 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 right like you know that song and uh, I, I don't know, know. what are you trying to sing what I don't song know. Is it? just uh, like it's, it's got the horns burr, burr, right like <laughs> oh, and no. she kicked with the beat In time? yes In time? and I was like baby's a musician girl. That's my girl that's um my girl. so so like now that she's four and three quarters she sings constantly oh yeah she sings nursery too. rhymes she sings abc she sings her own made-up songs like she sings songs that she did in chapel at school like every song she i love her rena originals she's got the best uh, my favorite is um um oh how's it go 
Oh, never mind. I'm gonna think about it because I can't remember it now. Okay, <laughs> it's okay. a really good one, and she like shouts. Well, 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 when the EP comes out, we will make sure. Yeah. That so good. Carrie always says, like, we we can like record you singing. I think we've done it like once or twice, but um, but then like sometimes she'll just keep singing, like wow. kind of like like when wow. teachers are trying to talk to her, right? And so we, like That's teach true. that, like, okay, let's quiet down when we're listening and then you can sing when it's like free play right like so like but we we do encourage her her yeah that's a great point janine you know just like as a well i mean first of all parenting be be tough yo just in general so it's like right right, what's wrong we don't know yeah but i you know especially as as enthusiastic creatives as you and carrie are yeah trying to toe the line and you know know that they're like i don't want to squash it i don't want to squash it but at the same time trying to instill like, okay, there are appropriate times yeah, for these things exactly. and there's still, there still structures that you mentioned, right? Like rules and regulations in terms of when it's appropriate to do that. Right. So, yeah. yeah. I hadn't even thought it's of that. Tough. I mean, Carrie's still in daycare, so we're not quite like school, school time yet, but. Yeah. So if anybody didn't realize my husband's name is Carrie and oh, Rowie's daughter's name is Carrie. <laughs> That's right. Your husband is K E R R Y, and our Carrie is K E R R I. Yeah, I'm gonna say Carrigan to to um, yeah, make it a easier. So um, I mentioned this before we hopped on live. Uh, I bought this book when I was yeah. in in Seattle, uh, speaking at a conference and visiting my friends. They took me to a witchy shop. It is oh, witchy right. shop. The twelve faces, the twelve faces of the goddess by Danielle Blackwood, and I'll put the link in the show notes. Transform your life with astrology, magic, and the sacred feminine. It sounds I, very um, like Game of Thronesy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Were there like 12 or 11 like gods or gods? <laughs> I wanted to pull some, there's some aspects reading about Gemini and the Gemini woman, and I'd love to, I think a lot of what we already chatted about pretty much on brand with what's here, um, but one of the things is, the the freedom the gemini woman needs the freedom to experiment and explore Mm -hmm. to try on different personas and perspectives the way other signs try on clothes it's in her nature to play with possibilities and Mm -hmm. imagine new paradigms Ooh, that would got me the wait say the last bit again it was good it's in her nature to play with possibilities and imagine new paradigms it's so true um I find that like with like I used to call it overthinking. Um, <laughs> I no, love like, okay, like, what'd you reframe it to then? I love this. But I, I think that, but I think like it, it like it, de- it depends on the life stage, right? Like I was overthinking back in the day when I was still in the dating pool and like, yeah. oh my God, but what if this and what if that? And oh, like, I'm so glad I'm glad with that. that. That's right. The word. I know it's the word. word. <laughs> uh, but like, what you, like the way that was phrased is like perfect, like imagining possibilities, yeah. like, right. And like, I find myself doing that now, like all the time with like like possible um like sign gigs and stuff like that like oh what <laughs> this is really funny i recently um i made penne alla vodka this is probably like four months ago now at this point but i've gotten into it i made penne alla vodka and i had like cream left and i had chocolate chips right <laughs> and so i made chocolate ganache and i just like mm. this is so terrible but wonderful um Whenever I just need a little something, I just get a scoop of my ganache and I eat it with a spoon, right? Girl, um, you're talking to a third trimester pregnant woman. Yeah, right. right? I just phase me at this point when it comes. I just to do it as a stress reliever. I'm here for it, <laughs> but 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 then I so then I started making it. I'm like like stirring the chocolate one time, and I was like, because because then once I got through with that, I needed more, so I made it again just because I wanted more <laughs> chocolate. I was like, what else can I make with this like cream that I will have enough left over for chocolate ganache and not be like, hey, I just want to make chocolate ganache, so I just keep buying cream for other things, and I'm like, well, and now I have enough for well, chocolate, ganache. chocolate ganache. I love um, that. So I make the chocolate that. ganache. This is the third time now. And I'm stirring it and I'm like, ooh, what happens if I put salt on this? So then I and then I did a taste test and I like put them in like mini cups and I was like, um, like mini like um mini muffin cups, right? Uh-huh. And I like doled out a little bit 
And then I doled out like second taste and like sprinkled salt on top. And like, so Carrie and I and Rena have taste tests of it. Um, and I was like, ooh, maybe I could make this a side gig and like <laughs> caramel in some. And like, maybe I could, you went like this, um, maybe I put peanut butter in some. And like, what if I did this with it? And I'm just like, the possibilities are endless. Yeah, like, the whole could, business I model. It? could I make it like gifts or could I make it both? Or maybe I should just put salt right into the whole batch. I like, I was just like thinking of all these so funny. random things about how I could turn in my chocolate ganache like addiction into like a possibility, an opportunity. An opportunity that you're sharing with your loved ones and others. I'm right? I'm, so, I'm so here for that. I mean, and like, and then the yeah. STEAM and STEM thing, I was like, oh, I feel like I could write a curriculum about this. And like, you know, <laughs> I, I, I like legit started writing curriculum in my head of, okay, first we would start out with like the basics and like, cause you have to know the foundation. Like, I, you know, like people say, like you have to know the rules so you know how to break them. Like with art, that's really true. Like you, mm -hmm. you have to know the foundation of the, and like the technical aspect of the arts before you can go play around with it and I mean I know there are like self-taught artists and self-taught musicians and stuff but like you know when you go to art school like you learn the technique and then yeah, you yeah. learn how to branch out and so I had this idea like ooh, like and again like this is just like daydreams of mine like my <laughs> imagining possibilities are like okay well first we would teach the techniques of drawing and painting and then we would teach the techniques of the science uh, or the the scientific method and like hypothesis and observation and testing like right and then and then we would teach how to integrate the arts into that so that you get creativity into your like hypothesis and like yeah wow girl <laughs> that, you went down a rabbit hole on a Thursday oh, now <laughs> from ganache well okay I mean well first of all that whole example just illustrates another thing you're really great at which is the cooking and the food oh, yeah and, thank you yeah, always enjoy what you're which is also cooking. creative also creative I don't want to get down another rabbit hole but real quick when I had I had like a required course in college um philosophy of art and mm -hmm. and like we talked about like what is art and what is beauty sure, and all that sure. right and one time the teacher said that cooking was not an art because um it did not evoke emotion and I was like, yeah, it's called oh, comfort well, it's food, like comfort. I mean, I know that folk, and actually <laughs> my husband was at a happy hour yesterday for work and someone mentioned that, you know, that bake, I know I've heard it in terms of baking, right? That baking is more of a science because there's more an exact, you know, but yeah, even then, you can take that steam. science and tweak exactly. it. You can, mm -hmm. you can steam it up, steam up that, that that baking. Yes. But, Steve. Well, it, it reminds me of when we, my husband and I were watching that blown away Netflix series. I don't know well, if you've seen, seen it, the glass blowing, mm -hmm. it's glass blowing reality show. Oh my God. I and think I have heard of it and wanted to check it out. And kind of like forgot. Cool. Thank you for bringing it back. But one of the challenges was that they had to, they had to create something out of glass that represents food. And one mm -hmm. of the, one of the competitors was like, I don't, I don't like food. I see it as a means to an like you know like I have to mm -hmm. make and I it just blew my mind I was like how do you not I can't even what nationality like, like sorry but I was gonna say what nationality is that because every nationality I know of food is like central, so central. to celebration and he was like a generic white man I have no idea it was uh, very, I felt that very tracks. That tracks. I, I was very British upset. no <laughs> yeah. it was very upsetting I sorry, was like, all the Brits out there but similar similar commentary but like there, oh, yeah and there, there is a thing though that like Irish and British food is like not super like flavorful and oh, right like so maybe good. that's it maybe yeah. that's why he didn't have anything to connect to because it wasn't flavorful <laughs> you and I both know we love our food and the connection it creates and the emotions it evokes and so I love that that example of you seeing possibilities with your your future ganache business. <laughs> Which is probably <laughs> only in my mind, but <laughs> I think that's so it's like here's that that's a y'all, this is a window into I just, Janine's. Yeah, I just came up with another possibility. What kind of muffin tins would I use? <laughs> what color? Rainbow? <laughs> Okay, well, find some materials for your birthday party. Just let me know. <laughs> oh. okay. Well, the other thing, the other thing in the book that I wanted to call out, which again, I felt like we talked about in great detail was uh, as Gemini is attuned with the realm of the mind, she often has a love of words and the mm -hmm. ability to use language as an art form. Books, mm -hmm. literature, and poetry are often a passion that starts in childhood and continues throughout her life. 
Were you an avid reader growing up? That's an interesting one because no, I was not. Um, you weren't. Not, not because I don't like literature, but because I had trouble reading. <laughs> so oh, I, I just okay. like was a really, really, really slow reader. Um, I don't, I remember like I couldn't read until the end of first grade, probably. So mm -hmm. the fact that Rena is like already like knows some words and like Disney Plus, uh, obviously Disney Plus, that says Disney on it. Like she saw books. And she was like, that's a Disney book. And I was like, oh, wow. Like, I don't know that I would recognize that. My mom yeah. says I could sight read some things before that. But like, I yeah. struggled with reading. Yeah. So um, um, I remember one time, like one summer, I like had to, re I think I was probably in like second grade or something because we had summer reading. Um, maybe, yeah. maybe it was later than that. I don't know. But um, young enough that like, I didn't have to do the summer reading, right? Mm -hmm. But like old enough that like, I probably should have. Um, and my mom would like, like sit me in the living room because the living room was like secluded a little bit from the rest of the house, sort of. Um, um, but oddly enough, found out through the years that even though it was like secluded, it was like, um, like a, um, like a sound chamber. So everything from the rest of the house echoed into the living room. So I always knew what was going on everywhere. Um, mm -hmm. But so I'd go in there to like try and do reading and like always somehow history, I would read history in there, like as I was in high school and stuff. Um, but like anything I needed to focus, I'd go in there because I didn't have any distractions, mm -hmm. aside from, you know, the noise. But um, and, and my mom's like, if you read for a half an hour, I'll give you stickers because I was super into stickers at the time. Sure. Um, and, and like, I remember like flipping a page and like looking at my clock and been like, that it took me five whole minutes to read one page of a book. Mm -hmm. Um, and it was like, so it was depressing a little. And then I found mm -hmm. like, maybe it was because I was a slow reader or maybe I just didn't get good books or whatever. Like I didn't, I, I never could get a book that I was like super into. So like, mm -hmm. um, like books that my brothers liked, I wasn't, I didn't really like, mm -hmm. um, although some of them did, I like. There was one like um, it wasn't the Indian in the cupboard, but it was something like that where there were like little like things that came to life and they were in castles and stuff. I don't remember. I didn't finish it, um, but I, I like finally like actually started sort of to like reading like later. I think I probably was in high school or like almost high school. And I read this like um, like I think it's like not even teen book. I think it was like younger um, Ella Enchanted. Oh, and yeah. <laughs> I love that book. I think I've read it four or five times, which is saying <laughs> for someone who doesn't read much. Um, yeah. I just love it. And I didn't realize I didn't read the back cover. I didn't realize it was a story of Cinderella until like halfway or more through <laughs> the book. And then I read the cover and I was like, what? What? <laughs> and I was That's like, I loved it. Yeah. And then, and then like, uh, and then I was like kind of jealous in college. Like my friends had read like all of the um, like um, Tolkien books mm -hmm. and like all the, you know, cause that was when Lord of the Rings like was like the big thing. Yeah. And I was like, you, you read the books, but they're humongous. Right. Yeah. So like, I don't like, I'm not a good reader. Um, but I think like, um, I do like to write. Uh, yeah. yeah. Like I don't do it like, anymore like for personal thing, but I like I like writing um like I write almost all the lyrics for Carrie and I songs. Um and he write he, every once in a while he'll write like a verse. Um well I mean and I mean the it doesn't necessarily mean in terms of reading, which I found that actually I don't think I knew this about you about really? your slow reading. I remember like oh, Mr. My parents, like had my but, like thing with yeah. Mr. D'Antonio and they were like Janine's sad, like, or like upset all that she's stressed all the time because she doesn't have time to read all the things you give her because she's such a slow reader. And he was like, and they were like, oh, should we, should we like get her lessons for like speed reading? He's like, I don't think so because I'm sorry she's stressed, but like she retains everything. And he's like, she's just doing great in her schoolwork because she knows every single thing that she reads. So, uh, you know, yeah, well, just say, do you enjoy, do you enjoy like, listen like you know like receiving language mm -hmm. or words or, you That's know what i mean like versus yes. i mean i do people. like back to the tonys i love the speeches i love when people oh, yeah. like express like their deepest like passions and yeah. and like things i i do like that yeah um very gemini i don't yeah. really yeah i don't really listen to like audiobooks i'd rather listen to music 
Mm -hmm. um, but like I have to say, like um, when I what was I going to say? Like when I was in like college, I really enjoyed writing papers about things that I liked, right? Like I don't like to write papers, but like I, I and this is kind of weird too. I really enjoyed writing things for Italian class because like we had to, we didn't, it was less like research because it was just trying to see if you knew Italian. Um, so like there would be like an assignment about like what you read or whatever, but I would be like really into like writing it how I would speak English. So like, I'd have to get like really like in depth in the Italian, but like, I was like, and my teacher always be like, you, you write so well. And I was like, because I can't like, I can't not, I can't like dumb it down. Right. Like I have to just translate it really yeah. well because yeah. I, I don't know how to not communicate that with sure. Sure. communication. Like right. Right. And I mean, gosh, I mean, we know like music is, we communicate through music and lyrics and yeah and theater and all that stuff as well mm -hmm. so it definitely all all it's all it's all same same right yeah it's yeah different, it's a different vehicle through which we can acquire knowledge or information or connect with each other um so speaking of like creative and other ways to communicate do you have any tips for folks who may be on the i'm not creative blah 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 mm -hmm. right what what tips would you give to someone to help them express themselves or communicate more creatively? Hmm, that's good. Um, well, like, I mean, like the whole, yeah, like I would say just like grab like, well, I mean, and I know people are like getting really into like coloring books and stuff. I would say like get crayons or whatever and not use a coloring book just do it. Whatever comes out on the page. Um, I actually was in a part of a, like, this is so fun that like, this is one of the really fun parts about working at, um, a, a university is that like when they're research, like, uh, like clinical, not clinical trials, it was just like a research thing on, um, on arts. And it also helps that Drexel has a school that is, you know, dedicated to like, um, um, creative arts therapies, but there was like a study um, that I could be a part of that I was on on how um, the arts actually like decrease your stress hormones. Yeah. And so they like they swabbed my mouth and like pre pre uh, creative activity and post creative activity to see oh, like nice. if my cortisol levels went down. <laughs> um, oh, but cool. then, like I don't know me, I'm sure they did um, because the study there was published and you know they Yay. said um, but uh, I don't know me specifically what happened but apparently it doesn't matter if you're an artist a self-proclaimed artist or not creative activities help you no matter what um I can't remember if they said I think they might have said that 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 um coloring books actually are good are potentially for the non-artist better than mm -hmm. um I can't remember so don't quote me sure. maybe look it up yeah, Search cool. Drexel um, College of Nursing and Health Professions uh, thing. Um, but um, I think it said that that like freeform art was not as good um, at reducing stress levels for like the general. I mean, I don't think they made that that. But for me, I got that piece of paper where I was free to do whatever. So that was the thing they tested b before and after on um coloring books and before yeah. and after on before. like just reform art mm -hmm. um i remember like so they had the questions also that they asked you so they tested your cortisol but they also asked you like questions yeah. and and like the questions were like um i think it was like they gave a statement and you say like yes yes no sometimes i don't remember yeah. um but the, it was something like i feel more at ease right mm -hmm. uh, or something like that like there were like five or ten yeah. of these questions that say things like that and i remember after the free form one i was like yeah i feel more at ease like i was just like i it was like yeah. it was like i just had a glass of wine like <laughs> i, was just like, oh, I love so that it's like your therapy i mean i feel the same way about you know just singing or dancing Sing like ecstatic dance, you know, just like I used to do that. Before. Like when I was in high school and nobody was around, I would just like dance around like my bedroom oh my and or like the, so like it's you've been to my parents' good. house, but um, there's like, 
there's like a balcony kind of thing, like, right. Yeah. So like all the bedrooms are around this balcony that comes down like the main staircase. And so like, if, if no one was home, I would like dance from my room and then like around the balcony and just yeah. be like, la, 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 you know, so <laughs> like, sing and dance. So, like, well, you talked about when you talked about the bit about the foundation, it made me think of, of ballroom dance too. Right. Cause you know that, mm -hmm. that I'm competitively trained <laughs> and that's how I met Derek. Um, but we, Derek and I have talked about it in terms of you need the basic steps and like know the foundation of the dance to then, you know, be able to more creative, you know, have more creative. Yeah. Or whatever. But I think I like this, how we're coming full circle to that, to be like, but also if you don't want any framework or foundation and just want to pop on some, you it's know, helpful. yeah, music from, from the two thousands and dance out dance to it out. <laughs> to Backstreet Boys or something like yeah. that. Yeah. And that, that's, yeah. oh, shoot, you just said something and it made something come to my mind and now I can't remember what it was. Um, <laughs> it was about dance. the coloring. Oh, about the freeform oh, yeah. therapy? Maybe it'll come back to me. We'll okay. Keep yeah. Well, <laughs> it happens sometimes, even to us communicators. <laughs> but, but Air Gemini, she's like, mm, what she's yeah, got, there's too much. Lots. Free thought happening. Flying, flying around. Well, unless it, you know, if it if it comes back to you, it comes back to you. But are there any, you know, gosh, we went through so many topics and things, and I thought it was very delightful and beautiful. And I'm excited we can continue this conversation in person uh, for your birthday party tomorrow. But is there anything else, any final thoughts or words in regards to, you know, creativity and communication and finding your voice and showing up? more authentically and embracing your Gemini, you know, dual self of, I want to be with people, but I also want to be alone. Yeah. <laughs> Anything that's um, coming through right now? Let me think. Cause now I'm like stuck on that. I think like, like what, I, what I was going to say had something to do with communication. Right. Okay. So I think like, um, shoot, I can't remember. It's all good. <laughs> um, but I, I think like, um, like I, I have a easy time, like just, and I guess this is a part of the Gemini easy time, just like saying what's I'm, what I'm feeling, what's on my mind. Yeah. Um, cause I, I feel like there have been times in my life where I didn't feel that, where I didn't feel like I could. Right. Sure. And, and then not to be like, I don't know, but uh, like in relationships prior to Carrie, um, I like was like, do I be like, should I really say that? Well, if it's not yourself, then, then, or like, right. If that was questioning whether I should say what I really felt. Sure, right. Sure. And then be, be finding people and specifically the person Carrie, who I can do that with yeah. maybe say, feel like, wait, I should have just done this all along. <laughs> and, and I need <laughs> other parts of my life. Right. Like I remember I came to Catholic, um, not to bring up a touchy political subject, but there was a war started while we were in school and some people were for that war and I was very not for that war. Mm -hmm. And I was not quiet about the fact that I thought war was wrong. And um, I'm <laughs> such a pacifist. And, um, and, you know, sometimes people got upset about that, but if I were mm -hmm. to, if I were to act like I was okay with it, it would have hurt me more. And, um, yeah. Yeah. Would have made me feel bad inside. And I think that comes back to like our whole fertility issue and why mm -hmm. I am so like vocal, I guess, about it. it. Like, I don't really, I don't want to be a spokesperson or I don't want to be, but if I say nothing and I, and I know someone else is going through it, mm -hmm. or if I know that I'm imagining the possibilities that many of our friends or, you know, co coworkers or acquaintances may be going through it, mm -hmm. it, it hurts me not to express myself and show that this is what I'm going through. Right. Yeah. Get a little choke it up. Oh, so, yeah. But yeah. Like mm -hmm. I, I find that, that, um, that it has come naturally to me to express myself because if I don't, it, it's, it's to my own detriment. I love that. Right. You're, you're, you're in integrity with yourself and mm -hmm. knowing that in the long run by not speaking up. Yeah. You're not being true to yourself and yeah. Right. You're, you're and affirming yourself. Yeah. Lot. And and I also I don't know if my mom is watching. I think she 
had intended to, but I would have like shout out to my mom. She always encouraged that. She was definitely like in, um, in her all girls Catholic college, a, a women's lover. And, and so like, she always like, you know, made it okay for me to speak out and like speak my mind and stuff like that. And I hope I'm that kind of mom to Rena. Um, yeah, yes. but, but I think growing up in that environment, like, and knowing like what it felt like to keep things inside, like made it really easy as, especially as an adult to continue that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. No, we're going to give shout outs. Your to, to we love your mom. No, she's a yeah, wonderful role model. Love and, you, mommy. Yeah. yeah. We love mom. Cause she, I mean, she's, yeah, she's a wonderful example of, you know, she's, she's raised y'all, you and your brothers so well. And she, she's a great, inspiration for for us as as i guess we're are we like approaching middle age now i don't, I don't know, know. What, are we? what are we i don't know whatever women moms yeah <laughs> how old are we now i don't know <laughs> uh, inspiring and i love that you're continuing on the legacy with your with your daughter and i think that's just so valuable and important and just continuing to show our children i know that's been huge for me as well as as a mama is just Role modeling yeah, for my calling me now. <laughs> Role model. Come up and be in my yeah, show, Rowan show oh, with me. <laughs> Not my show. Sorry. <laughs> I'm the guest on the show. Um, <laughs> come say hi. Yeah, we'll have. Yeah, we'll... I'm talking to uh, Auntie Rowie. <laughs> what? I don't know even what sign is who's, is um early September. Who's uh -huh. Auntie Rowie? Hi, who's I know. We haven't, we haven't in seen each other in many years because of the pandemic. Yeah, uh, early, you, early. Hey, you smell like tea. Yeah, I smell like tea. That's good. <laughs> um, Virgo, is that is that Rena's birthday? Virgo. Yeah. She I don't know much about Virgo. Yeah. She had perfectionist tendencies. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Kerrigan has a, a Virgo moon. So we got to watch that. Cause I, yeah. 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 Already Carrie's like, oh, I didn't do it. Right. Like, Oh, no, it's no right or wrong. Looks great. Um, yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. there's no right answer here. <laughs> you gotta like help these kiddos. Like, no, don't be like me. Let's not do that. Um, ah, yeah. I know. Yeah. I saw your thing. I was like recovering perfectionist. And I was yeah. like, we definitely, I think I've recovered. I think. It's a process. Yeah, because I I don't think I really do. Like, I know, like, in high school and college, for sure, I was, like, perfectionist. Now I'm just, like, I don't know. Like, I'm just trying to get by. Trying, you know, we're just trying to live life here. Well, you we're know, just trying to, like, life. run a household and have an eight-to-five job. Exactly. I'm just trying to do our thing. Well, speaking of, you know, our children and, and ch ch childlike things, um, I just, before we wrap things up, just want to quickly talk about next month's conversation uh with someone you know very well my sister maria oh, briones i'm so excited yeah, to chat with oh yeah yeah i went to her birthday party sometimes <laughs> my favorite cancer uh goddess queen uh we're gonna talk about inner child work and how Ooh. inner child work ties into self-care because cancer season is a very nurturing like self-care e type of energy mm -hmm. so yeah how can we chat with that inner child and um, you know, even though it can be challenging work to think about maybe some of the more difficult things that <laughs> may manifest as adults, question mark. Yeah, um, I feel like that. So yeah. like not to. Yeah, but I feel like like inner child work, even when you think about the fun stuff is hard when you've like you're kind of groomed as an adult, like not to be mm -hmm. like that. Right. Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. and, yeah. and I feel like it's like, well, what like like back to the the whole thing we talked about earlier with the parenting and the rules versus the creativity yeah. like okay yeah. well, well when should i express my inner child like my yeah. free self and when should i you know conform to social norms exactly i mean the conditioning is so real and so just in embracing the value of play which again mm -hmm. i'm very excited about when we sing karaoke together i know i'm so again. i love the karaoke um, but yeah keep an eye out that that conversation is happening on July 6th. We're doing it a little bit earlier, just in case my baby comes a little early. <laughs> so we are going to be chatting on Thursday, uh, July 6th uh, at 1 p.m. Oh, yeah. We will make sure that you get all the links. Um, but, yeah, Janine, thank you so much. This has been super fun. I yeah. really enjoyed chatting with you. I, I feel like it. I just had one more thing that popped in my head. Oh, please. Yeah, please. Yeah, so, like, you were asking me about, like, 
um, um, like words and communication in terms of like reading and stuff. But yeah. like, um, I do always kind of like <laughs> imagine the possibilities of of like speeches. So like hmm. when our our close friend Colleen got married. I was not the maid of honor, but I like organized the bachelorette party and I gave us toast. And I remember like rehearsing my toast like days and days in advance, but like never writing it down, just like wanting to like be eloquent at what I said and like make sure I said all the things about Colleen and when we, when we first met her versus once we got to know her. <laughs> Oh yeah. Talk about and like talk I did that when I met Kerry and like with, with my vows. Like I swear to you, I was rehearsing my vows like a year before like we got <laughs> married. Like we I'm not sure we were engaged yet. Um <laughs> we knew though, we knew. Yeah, um we knew. <laughs> and like I was I was rehearsing a, like a little like speech for tomorrow night for my birthday party. <laughs> Oh my goodness! Well, I, I mean, like like a year. toast kind of thing. I don't remember like when I impl I intend to do it, but sometime tomorrow you're gonna you know All right. see that communication Gemini skill come out. Well, I will receive it, and I'm gonna cheer and be very excited. I'll and probably cry. Just, yeah, you know, it, I mean, I'm a I'm a Pisces anyway, so I'm emotional slash I'm very hormonal. So yeah, right. <laughs> I will. You Cry won't on. have the drinks in you. I will. <laughs> yeah, but until then, until then, until mm. I get to see your beautiful face tomorrow in person and say the faces off. Um, I yeah, I just want to thank you so so much for for taking the time. You yeah, know, thank you I for was, inviting like, me. This is super yeah, cool. As I say, like when I was thinking about the Gemini's in my life, one of which is my husband, but he, I don't. Oh know. yeah, he would have not. Oh God, <laughs> right? Is he like close to the end? He's like, he's like, not, no, he's just, he doesn't, he's not into this kind of stuff. Okay. <laughs> um, he would have been like, what are we talking about? Uh, which is fine. We love, we love, we love our Gemini husband. Anyway, <laughs> um, you were like the first, I was like, oh, Janine. I mean, obviously like this is, this was beautiful and amazing. And uh, yeah, I mean, is there, do you have any, is there like an Instagram or like any, and of course, if you want me to drop the, the yeah. Arbor Christmas. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Drop the your... Arbor. Um... You can do I just later. I just send it to you later and you'll put yeah, it on later. Yeah, I'll do that. Because like, like, is there a site that has your your art or some place where we can see some of your? No, art? <laughs> it's fine. Just send. It um, I had one at one point, like when I graduated college, and then I like okay. lost it. Well, um, if you have any current works or yeah, anything, I'll throw some stuff up like to you. you um, it, yeah, on I haven't done like any painting in a while. Yeah, like whenever we we move, like all the art supplies get stuck in like a closet and they're there. I see them. I keep meaning to, to organize them, but you know, it's, it's a life, it's life. But, yeah. um, but yeah, we are like, Carrie and I are talking about like doing more pizza calendar stuff outside of the Christmas season. So we could, yeah. that's another thing. It's like, I, there is a point in time where I'm like, like, oh, I don't do art anymore. And then someone was like, but you'd make music, right? And I was like, I do. So like, I'm still yeah. exercising that muscle just in a different way. Like it's, exactly. just, it's yeah, it's just like a, like, I was like groomed to think that I was a visual artist, right? But like, no. I'm really let's, yeah. let's get rid of those limitations and boundaries. And I'm laughing here. My buddy Phil is uh, <laughs> standing up for Derek. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Mr. Winkler's the best. We must protect him. We, he is the best. We do love Mr. Winkler. Oh, and... I didn't mm -hmm. see that there was a comment. Then. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Phil, thanks so much for hopping on. Um, yeah. yeah and Thank you, Maria, a... for wishing me happy birthday. Yeah. Yes, I'm real. I'll, I'll join for yours and wishing oh. happy birthday. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Well, we will wish all the birthdays to Janine. We'll wish a happy birthday birthday to Maria next month. I hope you'll join us as we talk about cancer season, inner child work. I don't know if it's going to, I mean, who knows? I feel like inner child work can get heavy, but you know how we do. We keep it light. So <laughs> yeah, we well, talked about infertility and we got right back on those. Exactly. Oh. We got right back there. We got, That's yeah, tough. <laughs> very Gemini of us. So yes, yeah. thank you all. Thank you for watching those folks who are watching the replay. Let us know, um, you know, if you have anything that you want to follow up on. If you want to join the Intermuse membership, I'll drop all those links in the show notes. So until then, have a wonderful weekend. Oh, we have a new moon in Gemini coming up at the time of this recording. So, you know, set those intentions and let's like take this energy that Janine brought into this space um, as we move forward into the end of June and into July. Yeah. All right, y'all take care. Thanks so much. Bye-bye. Bye. Thanks.